Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm doing a review of the completely redesigned My Phone Act app to show you all the changes and to see if it really is better than the old app. Coming up. This is not the first time that we have seen changes to the My Phone Act app. This app was originally released with the Marvel line of devices at the end of 2018, and there have been some updates to add new features and to fix some old bugs. Now, as you can see, the old version of the My Phone Act app has been downloaded by over 1 million hearing aid users at this point, but only has a 2.8 star rating. Honestly, none of the major hearing aid manufacturers have good ratings on their apps. This is primarily because these hearing aid manufacturers are focused on improving their hearing aid technology, and the app controls really come off as a secondary priority. To be fair, in my experience, the vast majority of app-related issues have to do more with the phone that you're using Using, rather than the hearing aids that you're using. Nevertheless, we will see in the next couple of months whether or not there are enough positive reviews to increase this 2.8 rating for the My Phone Act app. The new app did get a complete redesign, which I happen to think is a lot cooler looking. However, I do understand that it can be confusing if you are already used to the old version of this app. Phone Act did add a couple of new features like the health data tracking in this new app, but the rest of the app is largely unchanged in terms of functionality. Now, before I actually start showing you the app, App. If you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really encourages me to make more of these review videos. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit that subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos and I release multiple new videos every single week. Also, I want to make sure that you know that I have a new website called hearingup.com, so make sure that you go and check out that website as well. That being said, I really appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the app. Right off the bat, you will be required to either create a new MyPhoneAC account, continue without an account, or log into your existing MyPhoneAC account. Now, chances are, if you purchased your Phonak hearing aids from the end of 2021 until now, you probably do not have a MyPhoneAC account yet. Now, you do not need to create a My Phone Act account to use the app or have access to remote care, but you will need an account to access the new health data tracking features and secure your health data. If you do want to register a new account, you can register using any email address that you want. This will not affect your remote care capabilities, even if your hearing care professional has a different email inside of their programming software for you. Of course, you will have to acknowledge that you have read and understood the privacy notice and the terms and conditions. And you will have to choose if you want to consent to sharing your user statistics with Phonak so they can use this information to improve the app in the future. Once you're past all of these formalities, you will have the opportunity to pair your hearing aids to the app. Just follow the step-by-step -step instructions inside of the app to get both of your hearing aids paired with the low energy version of Bluetooth. If you previously had your Phonak hearing aids paired to the old version of the app, they should be automatically paired to the new version. If you run into issues with this, you may need to start with a clean slate and will need to unpair your hearing aids in the Bluetooth settings of your phone and forget your hearing aids in the devices tab of the new My Phone Act app. If you still cannot figure it out, then contact your hearing care professional and they can get it set up for you. On the home screen, you will see different program options across the top of the screen that you can drag from left to right, as opposed to a drop down option on the previous version of the app. Some of these programs are default programs, some are created by your hearing care professional, and some can be ones that you've customized yourself. If you have rechargeable hearing aids, you will also be able to see your battery life at the top left and right of the page, but you still cannot get a disposable battery reading on the app. So if you happen to have disposable battery hearing aids, you're just going to have to listen for the low battery tone. You can also see that the area for the volume control is much smaller, which I think is a bad decision on Phonax part because it will be much harder to use for individuals with vision and finger dexterity issues. It is apparent that Phonax did this to get their health feature on the home screen. From comments that I've seen online, many people are pretty upset with this decision to clutter the main remote control screen of the app. Before we scroll down any further though, I do want to point out that you have the ability to mute your hearing aid microphones, split the volume control to adjust the volume of your left and right hearing aids independently, and an adjust program button. I do like how they labeled this adjust program button as opposed to just having a second hamburger menu in the bottom right hand corner of the old version of the app. 
Once you click this button and you enter the customization section of the app, you can see which base program you'll be adjusting by looking in the top area right here. In this case, we will be adjusting the Calm Situation program inside of the AutoSense automatic program. Phonak has elected to give a few additional quick program presets for comfort, clarity, speech, and surrounding that you can test out in different situations. Phonak has also elected to hide the three-band equalizer that was front and center in the old app. I'm not sure if Phonak found that most people do not use these equalizer bands, but honestly, I do not like this decision because it complicates the customization process. As you scroll further down the customization page, you can adjust the volume, noise reduction, speech focus, and dynamic settings, just like in the old app. Again, I think Phonak made another mistake in removing the visual representation of what the noise reduction and speech focus are doing when you drag the slider from left to right. However, I do like that Phonak gave an explanation of what each feature does, but think they should relabel low and high for noise reduction to less and more, because some people could interpret low and high incorrectly. I also wish that each of these settings had numbers associated with the adjustment so they could be easily replicated in an additional program if necessary. After you make your own custom adjustments, you can save them as a custom program that will appear in the top program bar across the home screen. You can create up to 10 different programs, including the default programs that came in the app originally, and yes, you can delete the default programs if you prefer. If you want to modify an existing custom program, you can make changes and click update instead of save as new. If you are streaming audio from your smart device or TV connector into your hearing aids, you will see the adjust program button change to an ambient balance button where you can offset the amount of ambient sound picked up by your hearing aid microphones and the amount of sound that you are streaming into your hearing aids. Now there are definitely still connectivity issues with this version of the app. Periodically I see one of the hearing aids struggling to maintain its connection. And if this occurs, usually the easiest way to fix it is to just close out of the app completely and get right back into it. Nine out of 10 times this will solve the issue. If it doesn't solve the issue, you can actually reboot your hearing aids and then try to reconnect them with the app. If that doesn't work, you're probably gonna have to reboot your phone altogether. All right, back to the rest of the home screen. As you scroll further down, if you have not set up the health feature by creating or signing into your MyPhoneX account, the option to do so will be available. If you have already, you will instead have the ability to set up goals for wear time and steps. Below the health section, you have the tips and FAQ section. I would personally like to see these FAQs and tips in the support tab only so it doesn't clutter the home screen as well. And I don't know why they have help with setting up remote support in bold black lettering in this section because there are clearly more tips and FAQs than just about remote support. The thing that I really like about the new app is the menu along the bottom of the home screen instead of having these hidden in a hamburger menu like it was in the old app. Let's continue to work our way from left to right starting with the health tab. This new health feature will allow you to do three different things. Track your usage time to ensure you're meeting your hourly wear goals and see which sound environments you have been in while wearing your devices. It will track your steps if you have a rechargeable Phonak hearing aid that has a motion sensor. And it will track your heart rate data if you happen to use the Phonak Odeo Fit hearing aids that have a heart rate sensor embedded in the receivers. Of course, make sure that you check out my detailed review of the Phonak Odeo Fit hearing aids that I will have linked in the description. Like I mentioned before, the Help app will let you set your goals for how much wear time you want to have per day and how many steps you want to take per day. Just remember, you must sign up for the My Phonak account to use this feature. Next along the bottom menu, you have the Devices tab. If you haven't yet paired your hearing aids, you can do it from this section as well. Here you can see all of your programs made by your hearing care professional or your personalized programs that you have created. You can also rename your programs, see what base program was used to create a custom program, or delete a program altogether. You can also adjust some of your hearing aid settings to include the Bluetooth phone call connection, setup of your Bluetooth streaming settings and tap control settings, change your auto turn on settings when removing your hearing aids from the charger, and activate hearing aid cleaning reminder notifications. The next section along the menu is the support tab. This is where you can access live remote care for virtual visits with your hearing care professional. 
This section also gives you access to the same FAQs that could be found on your home page, a library of video tutorials for a variety of Phonak app features, access to your user guide, another app tour, and all of the legal documentation. And last but not least, you can access your My Phonak app profile where you can update your personal details and My Phonak account password. If you do not want your health data to be tracked, you can easily disable health data tracking and control whether or not you want Phonak to have access to your health data. All right, there you go. Those are pretty much all of the things that you can do inside of the new My Phone Act app. Of course, there are some things that I don't really like about the new version of the app, but hopefully Phone Act makes some changes on some future updates to fix these issues that I just talked about. Personally, I am a fan of change, but I do understand that change for most people can be hard. So even if you do not like the version of the app the way that it is right now, just give yourself some time and chances are it will grow on you. Now, I want to know what you think about this new version of the app. So if you have things that you like or do not like about the app, make sure that you leave them in the comment section below. Just remember, Phonak does happen to read through a lot of these comments, so if there's things that you like and do not like, that can sometimes affect the direction that they take this app in the future. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my new website, hearingup.com.